Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Purring Pot. This is Rose and Stephanie Wynn. We are going to be talking about all things cats today. So I hope you have a nice warm beverage of your choice or cold, if that's the way you go. Um, and uh, join us as we talk about our second favorite household pet, or at least the second oldest household pet. I think, yeah. What? Well, then what was the first? Dogs. Dogs. So dogs were brought into the house first. Dogs were domesticated before, well, dogs were domesticated before cats domesticated themselves. Okay. Yeah. That's, I feel like I remember you talking about cats kind of always being domesticated in a way, or at least the house cat that we know of now. Or my yeah, remember. they they kind of did that to themselves, but they did it later than we did it to dogs. If that makes mm. sense. Gotcha. Because there's, because what the dog dogs are super closely related to wolves. Am I correct? Or is that there's some there's some new research out genetic research out that is is debating that fact. It's it's pretty highly debated at the moment. Um how closely related to wolves they actually are it would seem that they are um most likely domesticated from a version of like the wild dogs like we see the african wild dogs or the dingoes okay then from like the wolf wolf gotcha um so there's um, still like a species pretty similar to the dog the household dog out in the yeah. wild currently is that a no. fair statement? No, no. No, because we've done so much in the terms of genetic domestication to the dog that they no longer genetically resemble anything that is out in the wild. While they are in the family of, of canid, they don't have like we have with cats where we can say, oh, we're pretty sure it came from from there oh we're pretty sure it came from there we're actually pretty sure that whatever species and i believe it was asia um west asia that it started in that we started domesticating whatever species we started domesticating the wild dog down to the domestic dog we know today that species domesticated fully okay like it doesn't exist as its wild cousin anymore because we literally took the whole the whole gene pool into and turned into it into the dogs we know okay. today so is it similar in cats other than i know you, they more so domesticated themselves but as far as genetics are there any genetic similarities to cats in the wild like lions yes. Leopards, all that? yes we can we can um we can pretty much they have some pretty pretty close wild cousins that can even interbreed with them especially in north africa and um um the middle east there's there's still in egypt there's still um god names there's a little wild cat that can actually get mixed up with your common house cat um and they can have mixed breed kittens oh okay yeah that's that's okay. how close they are that's really cool um so before we get too much more into details, why for you are you so fascinated with cats and their history and why did tying into our name, the purring pot? Because it means something. Pot. It means something to us. When I was three, we adopted this big headed, big eared Siamese kitten. And um he grew up with me under the impression that he was a human and then I was his sister and <laughs> he was probably the coolest cat I could have grown up with. He he tackled me, he chased me, he was the reason I dragged my security blanket around behind me. He's the reason <laughs> why I sleep with my hands and feet tucked securely underneath blankets because there really was a monster under yeah. my bed. Um all of this doesn't sound very fun, but it's now like in my late thirties. These are very fond memories I have of this cat. Yeah. Um, and that's really where my love of cats started. A house doesn't feel like a home without a cat in it. It feels very empty and hollow. I went, um, 
I went to college for a brief period of time in Pittsburgh. And one of the first things that really stood out to me was just how empty your dorm room is without a cat, Mm -hmm. how, how cold the bed feels without, you know, that little bounce around two or 3 AM as they get up onto the covers with you. Right. And I just, I became fascinated with the little trivial facts about them and the fact that, you know, they did domesticate themselves. Unlike dogs, they, they're not there because they need you. They're there because they want to be there. And there's a, there's a very particular kind of love and affection behind that. I don't need to be here. I want to be here. And I'm going to interject. I know there's some of you probably thinking there is not a cat on this planet that wants to be near me. (laughs) <laughs> that's not yes that's not true that's, that's not true the that's cat true. As, a whole, as a species does i've got cats and dogs fighting behind me yeah. <laughs> um i currently yeah. have a very full cat tree so i have two my... cats how many how many you're you're three three i'm claiming three we're not sure about the outdoor ones yet i still think they belong to the farmer which out? I don't even know about these outdoor cats. We have a, a black, big black tom, a big short haired gray tom, and a little long haired gray female, I think, that come back and forth in and out of the carport and check it for spilled food Aww. and whatnot. And I think they belong to the farmer there behind us. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. I refer to them as shadow, stranger, and homeless. I love it because yeah, yeah I, and I I don't I don't differentiate who I'm talking about. <laughs> if I don't know them well enough, they won't let me get close to them. Um, so I I had cats when I was young. At least my first memory of cats were near my first memories, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my dad was not so much a cat person um, as I was growing up. We had tried a few more cats. They were they had minds of their own. One of them was really sweet. One of them just terrorized the house, the whole house. Um, and so it was just my, we were no more cats. We're not going to do any more cats. And, um, I begged and begged and begged because I loved the petting, the cats, the, the, the warmth that they give you. Like you're saying when you're in, when they're in your bedroom and you're you know, an only child or you have your own bedroom growing up, you, know, you don't feel alone. Um, yeah. and you can create this special bond with your cat. Um, yeah, and so my my parents surprised me for my thirteenth birthday and got me my my cat. This was my cat, and I was shocked because my dad was like, "No more cats ever." <laughs> he was like, "I'm done." <laughs> um, and now he loves cats. <laughs> <laughs> he does. I mean, they currently don't have any cats. They have dogs, um, but he does actually have a really soft spot for cats. But so I I I just. I love the, the hominess, the the squishiness, the loving, the purring. It just it's warm and it's comforting. Yeah. yeah. And when you're, you know, living in ancient farmhouses like I grew up in, and you hear things go bump in the night, it's always really comforting to be able to look down the bed and look at the cat. And if the cat's still sleeping, you know, you can just roll over and go back to sleep yes. yourself. Yes. <laughs> And they sleep in like in the crook of your knees and they just warm your whole body. Yes. Oh, so nice. And the, the the health benefits of them lowering anxiety that yeah, there's so much to a cat that's that's mm-hmm. fantastic. Yeah. And I for those of y'all listening, by the way, we are on YouTube as well. If you would like to go over and, and watch our cats and dogs and potentially in the mm-hmm. background. Um but that is one of the biggest reasons we've named this podcast the purring pot because to to uh get together and grab your hot cup of coffee or tea and just chat while there's cats rolling on your laps or going in between your legs like it's just it's it they help create such a warm and in, inviting environment yep yeah yeah well, there's a there's a turkish proverb um that I was always fond of once I learned of it. Um, When you are traveling to a new village or a new place, look to the cats 
And if they're confident and comfortable, then the people there are good people. Mm. I like that. I mean, yeah. I do think that could probably be applied to any household pet nowadays. Yeah. Um, not Because I'm sure there wasn't a lot of household pets at that time. No, actually. And in, in Turkish cats in particular are actually becoming an internet meme because of the fact that cities employ their they don't have stray cats they have employed cats those aren't cats that belong to a particular household they belong to the city mm, yeah. and it was really neat to see these turkish cities during like istanbul during covid where the police were going out and making sure that the community's cats were being fed and taken care of while everyone else was on this really super strict lockdown because mm. they view those cats as employees of the city they're there for pest serious yep. pest control mm -hmm. that's that's their purpose that's their job yeah and in those those countries like like egypt and turkey where where the the, the domestic house cat is native and i'm going to get to that point too i didn't even think to put that in the notes where the house cat is native those countries view view them in a very different light than we view them here in the west and it's very neat and it's very very cool all right, so um, expand on that. When so native, like I, I figure, I think I know what that means, but. Yeah, so where the domestic house cat is native in an, in an arcing area from like Northern Africa to Southeastern Europe and over like across India. And in those areas, they, they have natural predators they are not an introduced species that is where they come from that is where they domesticated themselves from um that whole mediterranean region as well and having an outdoor community of cats the domestic cat is less problematic in those areas than it would be in say the West mm -hmm. here in the United States where we introduced cats and they are an invasive species and they don't necessarily have a whole lot of natural predators. She has something to say about that. Yep. She likes, um, well, she was been around cats since she was. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I'll come get you in a second. But yeah, we, we let them out. And they, they breed prolifically, like they can have <laughs> two or three litters a year. Yeah. They're not neutered. They're not spayed and they're wreaking absolute havoc on the native wildlife. And people think, well, yeah, mice are a problem. Well, mice aren't the only things that cats prey on. They also I got prey on um, uh, like bugs and cockroaches and birds and birds. In fact, a single cat can take out some 20 odd birds a night on average. Oh my gosh. Well, what kind yeah. of bird are you talking? Like everything blue from jay like cardinal size or like all, or yeah. Like blue jay cardinal size down to sparrows. Okay. They'll take if they can get uh, pigeons. I've seen cats take wow. pigeons out of the sky. That's pretty big. Like, yeah. Okay. They're, yeah, <laughs> they don't. I mean, well, think about miracle. Like she yeah. seven pound cat dragging home a ten pound rabbit is a fantastic example of how they wreak havoc <laughs> on the ecosystem. If they can get their teeth around that animal, they're gonna kill it and take it home. And that's something right. you have to think about. That that is that is their instinctual ability and their 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 habit. And if you're gonna turn them loose outside in an area they're not native to that may not be the best thing for their safety, for the other animal's safety. This is a small predator and it's something that as responsible humans responsible for bringing them to the United States and to, to the Americas, that's something that we need to think about. So I do think that's a fun fact that not a lot of people may know is that cats were brought here. Yep. They're not native to this area. Are they native to South America? Nope. Okay. So the nope. Americas at all, they're not. No. Native. 
That's Western amazing. Europe, they're not native to um, a lot of the northeastern Europe areas. They're not native to some areas in like Asia and Japan. They're not technically native mm -hmm. to. They were introduced there as well, even though they've been there longer. Um, South Africa, the house cat's not native there. Australia, definitely not native there. And they actually have, yeah, they actually have a major problem going on right now with domesticated cats in Australia. It's it's becoming an issue. There's too many? Yes. Wow. Yeah. They get it's on becoming an um, issue. And they have a lot of program. endangered wildlife that, excuse me one second, yeah. I am. I have to meet my demands yeah. before I get fired. Hi. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. My goodness. You should see uh, Max when he's, when I have it like the recording up and uh -huh. uh, he sees your face on the screen. He's like, oh, oh. <laughs> Yeah. yeah that's 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 the thing that's the thing about cats that and and dogs have the same a same problem but we don't turn them loose as much as we do it's like it's a very interesting dilemma especially here in the americas where dogs there are more cats than dogs here in the u.s but there are more dogs living in homes than there are cats Mm-hmm. That makes and sense. That creates a that creates a huge ecological problem um that I think a lot of people aren't aware of. Probably not. Definitely probably not. Um because we're not in a society that uses cats as, you know, employers or employees. Yeah. That that type They're of thing. I've been to places that cats are there for a purpose. Yep. Um like out outdoor cats I'm speaking of. Mm -hmm. Therefore, purpose. No, I, mean, so, I mean, I've been to I've been to businesses where there's an indoor cat who's an employee. Yes, it's wonderful. <laughs> Always makes me want to visit the business more. I'm like, well, at least I know that like the product is clean and yes. they don't have a pest problem. Yes, they don't have a weird like <laughs> comforting thing to see a cat inside like a grocery store or something, and everyone's like, oh my god, that's such a problem. And I'm like, no, it's not. No, it's not. I'm good with that. I'm yeah. okay with that animal being around in the grocery yep. store. Yes. <laughs> they, they're amazing. They're amazing little animals. Um, so what is uh, the reason they were brought to America? Was it for pest control or was it for the household lovey-dovey cat that we well, know? <laughs> both. <laughs> um, for a long time, they were... They were employees they were and they they did struggle with a, a bad reputation um once the church moved in a lot of pagan practices viewed cats at, at venerated cats and and viewed cats as as good luck or as the embodiment you know gods could be walking around in the bodies of cats mm -hmm. um and the church really took latched a hold of that and not not as aggressively as you know they like to put on well the church encouraged the murder of millions no it, it it really didn't but it did give cats a bad name by saying that they could be possessed by the devil mm -hmm. just like they they demonized pretty much any pagan god they would do that with cats yeah um they you know black cats aren't good luck they're bad luck and and changing the reputation of cats. And it wasn't until Queen Victoria um, came along that in the Western world specifically that cats really gained back their, their good reputation as house pets. Okay. Now on the farm, on the ships specifically, any sailor in his right mind is going to, is going to see any cat as good luck. Yeah. Cats have been on ships for, I want to say, as long as ships have been around cats. Like, yeah, if I want, if I'm going to be on a, a ship like that, I, I want a cat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want a cat the, with me. Sailors of the cats can predict the weather, which there is a certain amount of truth in that. Um, they are able to sense pressure changes that we aren't. 
And so by watching the behavior of your ship's cat, you can sometimes get a one up on the barometer reading. Wow. That's cool. Um, yeah, it's, it's very, they're very, very much loved by sailors and have been for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So on ships, on farms, in, in industry, they've always been seen as employees, but it wasn't until the Victorian era that we started bringing them back into our homes. Okay. From the pagan era. I'm going to refer to it as the pagan era because that's really, it's, it's a different time frame for each country, really. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Um, now we've talked a lot about like the history of cats and women, like the, together. Mm -hmm. So where did the um, association of a cat being like more of a feminine counter, count, not counterpart. Um, Representation? Yeah. 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 The earliest I can find that i'm aware of is egypt okay and egypt really yes i know you're tired but you won't take a nap egypt really in my opinion hit the nail on the head with two different goddesses that are that can be viewed can be viewed as the same goddess you can't have peanuts yet yes <laughs> but you um, can put peanut butter in my yogurt Yes, I can. <laughs> um, with Bestet mm, names, give me a second, because I'm terrible with names. Segment, Bestet and Segment, and one being the wild tigress, leopard goddess, huntress, and. F you know, female, feminine fury and the other being the more domesticated Bestet, the, the house cat, the very sensual, sleek, mm -hmm. loving, caring, feminine side. Um, and it's, it's very interesting that, that both of, both of these were goddesses, but they both represented two, two very different sides of the feminine coin. And yet they were both cats. Okay. Yeah. I see where you're, what you're saying. Yeah. Like that's, that's the association. They, they were like, okay, well, you know, it's a cat goddess and it's, well, it's like, it's a cat deity. It's definitely a goddess. Right. It's definitely representing feminine energy. It doesn't matter that, you know, she's a huntress who takes blood sacrifices. That's definitely feminine energy. Right. Well, I mean, like, yeah. just like we were saying, cats kind of, we're talking as cats have kind of two purposes. One yeah. is pest control, that type of thing. The even the weather, you know, helping out. Um, but then just the loving, warm, cozy, home <laughs> vibe. Yeah, so it was like we're already talking about cats kind of having a twofold purpose. Yeah, and to to look back into whatever time frame that was, it's just interesting that that still continued. Oh, absolutely, and yeah. I think it it really does represent women and and the fact that for a long time i'm just gonna say for a long time women are pegged into two different holes we're either angry and and well no that's not true that's not quite what i want to say we're either strong powerful hunting creatures or we're domesticated house goddesses mm -hmm. and that's those are the two like if you look across pretty much any pantheon you're gonna see that most most uniquely you have like the goddess kali who can be all of those things in mm -hmm. one yeah and that's that's very much that's that feminine energy of yes i am a small predator but also i would like snacks <laughs> And and pets and pets. Whenever, only when I, when I them. Yeah. When I want pets. Yes. I want pets. Yeah. <laughs> I will tell you when I want pets. Yes. <laughs> it's funny. You just consent is important. Yeah. <laughs> See, cats can teach you about consent, y'all. Yes. Yes, <laughs> they can. Um, what about um? I know we've talked about the the black cat. Going back to the black cat. And being mm -hmm. connected to like the Salem witches and, and all of that. How did that come about? 
I cannot find anything concrete on how the change really happened, but in England and Ireland, and most likely Scotland as well, prior to Christianity becoming such a major religion, black cats were a sign of good luck. Um, they could also be a sign of mixed luck if it was walking towards you, it was bringing luck to you, and if it was mm -hmm. walking away from you, it was taking the luck away with it. Gotcha. So you know they they were harbingers of luck that was just their thing and it was sometime after the rise of christianity that they changed to just being bad luck and being symbols of of the devil mm -hmm. and um words being familiars of witches yeah. um there's no no real date or event that I can find to mm -hmm. pick it to. A lot of people like, well, you know, the plague, and there's just not a whole lot of evidence to back that up. That the plague, you know, people with cats experienced less plague in their, their communities. And as a result, the people who owned the cats were pegged as witches. There's just not a lot of evidence to back that up. So especially are you saying, because I have heard that, like that's one of the, that was one of the benefits of cats during the plague um, yeah. is that when you're saying you don't have evidence to back that up you're saying you don't have evidence that that meant that the women were quote witches or that cats didn't help with the plague the first that women okay. were witches okay it, there's not a lot of evidence to back up the fact that that is what gave them a bad reputation oh gotcha okay but there's it, not it, it did to a certain extent it's important to remember that any cat that's height hunting wild rodents or or rodents in your house those fleas can jump onto the cat mm -hmm. and then onto you right um and that those cats can get diseases from the pests that they're hunting and then pass those along to you mm -hmm. um if you do have an actively hunting cats it, it's important to take them to the vet on a regular basis and to make sure that they are getting their flea medication on a regular basis, not just for their health, but also for yours. Because yep. they that, are, they do, but they do limit rodent population. So cities where cats are venerated, like like uh, in Egypt and in Turkey, they those areas did experience less outbreaks of the plague. Hmm. It's not that it went away completely or right. magically. It just wasn't as severe as in other places. It seems though, like it, it kind of was a significant difference. Um, like enough of a difference that we're still talking about it, if that makes sense. It wasn't it like. It seems like from the research I did, because I did get curious and I really wanted to um, see where that came from. Yeah, give me a second. What you doing? Oh. Most of of the aggressive um, marketing of, you know, cats can prevent the plague dates back to the 90s. And a lot of it is attached to the modern witchcraft movement. And a lot of it is a grasping attempt to defend and legitimize the 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 new age witchcraft movement the new age paganism movement mm -hmm. um by by saying that you know well these are these are our symbols and these are the things that that represent us and and this is why they're legitimate and and this is why they were negative made negative by the church um and there's a lot of really deep clawed attempts to kind of change people's perspectives regarding cats as negative things. Um, they're definitely not disease carrying in that regard, but then, you know, they build up the mythology behind them in an attempt to legitimize the fact that they're not disease carrying as, as disease carrying as the rodents that they hunt. Right. Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. I hope it, that made sense. I felt like I rambled a little bit. <laughs> it's one of those where there is so much information that you there don't is. realize 
about your favorite little cat that that lays at the bottom of your bed it's and it's Love fascinating it. it's so fascinating um okay i've asked you a lot of questions what what else did you want to talk about um kind of steered you in some certain directions no no i like the direction that we're going because we're really pretty much covering my notes Dang. as we go <laughs> i didn't really read them I, I wanted to go in not having the information, so it was a genuine question. That's fair. That's totally fair. That's okay. okay. I love it. Um, but no, it was after the. It was around the Victorian period that Queen Victoria, in particular, being photographed with her cats and being a big fan of what's known as cat fancy, which is the cat version of, of, of breeding. Um, oh. It's referred to as cat fancy because, you know, there's about 30 official breeds compared to dogs, 200 official breeds. It's, it's kind of a new and kind of a loose thing. Mm -hmm. um, but she, her being open about her, her pet cat, she had a pair of Siamese and a pair of Persians, I believe, really launched. Pull it up. I'm trying to pull it up. You're, talking. You're going to try and pull it up. Oh, that's not her. Never mind. Keep going. <laughs> but um, really launched pet ownership of cats, like cats in the home as pets into popularity. They are moving them out of the employee status and into the companion status. Um, and that was, that's, so it's fairly recent that we've been treating them the way we treat them today mm -hmm. down here. And it was during that um, Victorian period that Harry Pointer, and that is some pictures, yep. that Harry Pointer was a photographer in Sussex, England. And he is credited for taking the first known that we know of mm -hmm. cat pictures and cat memes. And so if you are postcards on postcards, that's awesome. Um, if you are only listening, um, hop over to our YouTube channel. I have some pictures of Harry pointers, postcards. Um, it's a very adorable pictures of a cat riding a bicycle, um, some cats on the table with uh, a plate um, talking about bringing up dinner and then this cute, cute picture of cats with a, um, a crate and teacups and teapots, which, Hey, we're the purring pot with Pots, cats and teas. Yes. So it's really, really the, cute. The um, original cat memes, yeah. which, you know, are a little bit out of reference. Like, I don't necessarily know why some of them, you know, I don't, I don't get it, but at the same time you do get it. Like you look at it and you're like, yeah, no, that's still a relatable picture. And they're yeah. like 200 years old. <laughs> well, who, of everybody listening, how many of you go on YouTube and type in funny cat videos? <laughs> it's like, the yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's where we're moving to here shortly is, is just the, the, the cats and the internet is in a wild. You okay? Good. Okay. The cats and, and the internet just took off together for whatever reason. He's a major wiggle worm now. I don't know what I'm going to do when she figures out how to crawl. <sighs> I'm not ready for that stage. I'm it, not. It, yeah. I'm not ready. I don't care that we're recording. You can include this. I'm <laughs> ready for the crawling stage. <laughs> My experience. It, crawling was not that scary if if that's what you're worried about well i just well, like the crawling energy she has and she can't even crawl yet <laughs> and the the ingenuity of figuring out how to roll towards toys that she wants mm -hmm. i can only imagine like she's gonna be like crawling towards things that she doesn't need to be crawling like yeah, <laughs> that's a whole layer that I'm just not ready for yet. Yeah. Like the house isn't clean enough for that. And I'm not talking about the floor. I'm talking about like the stuff the on stuff. the floor. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's definitely been one of, I've noticed the other day I had to move a magnet up on the fridge. I was like, oh, well, okay, you're getting taller. Let's move this up. 
<laughs> it, was, it was those little um tape cassette tape magnet yes. for and Christmas. The little, the little ones too. We have so and many we, little ones that I worry those. about. And I'm like, that's no, no. <laughs> I'm move it above the water. We'll the get water some big water. ones for you to play with. How yes. about that? The letters, we'll get like big letters. Oh, I should yeah. Look. I should look for some fun magnets. He would like that. Yeah. But all so right. all right, we're back. We had to back take a to cats. baby break. Yes. Back to cats. Yes. Let's see. Where were we? We were talking about the very first cat memes. Yes. Yes. That. And fun anecdote during um Jim and I's honeymoon, we got to go to the Nath Nathaniel Hawthorne Museum in Salem, Massachusetts. And while we were there, there was just the most adorable, there was a display of a cab captain's quarters on a ship and posted up in there was just the most adorable little eulogy to a cat who had died at sea, traveling to the Americas with its family, um, dying for his patriotism, as it, it says in, in his little eulogy. And it was just one of my favorite parts of the museum to see how even at that time the cats were part of the family and they traveled with the family in a <laughs> way that we we perceive as being like the dog's place so to speak right yeah i was trying to pull up that picture but i can't um screen share from messenger or at least oh. i i can't quickly <laughs> gotcha <laughs> I know That's I have okay. that picture, it was have, but we'll link, there's a link. We'll put it in the description box yes, for yeah, that cat it, because it is so cool. And it is, it so is such cute. a sweet little like personal touch thing that I just loved while we were there. And yes, I did a museum on my honeymoon and I will do it again. <laughs> That's what I do on vacations is art galleries, museums, and historical points of interest. That's what vacations yeah. are for. The older I get, the more that I am leaning that direction as well. Yeah. I was very much the kid where I was like, this is kind of sort of interesting, but I'm done now. <laughs> like, yeah. I went through the museum. I'm good now. Let's, let's go on. I'm going to go swim. Let's go swim. Uh -huh. um, um, and then as we move forward through time, we end up, you know, with the world war during the world wars, we have cats serving in the military i believe there are three or four who actually won a few like purple hearts or silver crosses cats yes oh i've heard of that i forgot mm -hmm. i forgot there, were dog, there was one dog i who i th don't quote me on this because i'm pulling this from my memory and my memory is not reliable um i think one dog who got the silver cross because the silver cross is for bravery right you should know this. You have military in your family. <laughs> I should. No, I should know that. Um, Fine. I'll go do my research. <laughs> but yeah, no, there's the, there's several horses who have won purple hearts. Um, yeah, no animals in, in the military are, are a big thing. And cats, cats are along with that. A lot of times as mascots, Mm -hmm. A lot of times as just pest control on bases um, and on ships, but they very much are considered critical parts of their units. As we can see here, a couple of airmen relaxing and, and taking some anxiety off their shoulders yep. with a kitten and a string. And that's yeah. another great thing about cats is you don't need a whole lot to entertain them. Yeah. <laughs> Shoe string will do it. This one is... um is also one of my my favorites from this yep. website kind of have it's right in the middle you kind of have to look real deep into the middle he, this soldier is feeding this most likely stray cat on the battlefield yep. it's just probably so cute not a stray cat after this was over yeah probably not we and, see it in even in like modern day ukraine where they are digging little cat doors out into the trench trenches for their cats um <laughs> they're carrying their kittens around underneath their bulletproof vests they're giving bulletproof vests to the cats that was my favorite was the little molly vest Aww. for the cat 
in the trench and I was like that just oh my god <laughs> and then this one in the mail room I'm guessing that yep. you know the, mm -hmm. the office area the supervisor and he's like eyeballing that pen he wants it yeah. so oh, bad. yeah no that pen is that pen's gonna go <laughs> that's definitely yeah. yeah um so I think that's a great a great transition to modern day cats and mental health yeah how how is that there How does that work? Because like we were saying earlier, we'll play those cat videos and the la laughter is obviously so good for your mental health and your, your inner well-being. But why is it that cats give every, not everyone, most people that dope, that dopamine, is that what it is? That's um, serotonin actually. Serotonin, sorry. Serotonin. Yep. Dogs How will give dopamine. Okay. Cats give serotonin, which is very so, interesting. So um, why? There's yeah and that again i'm pulling from memory but i'm pretty sure they give they they each give calming um chemicals in the brain but they give it in different ways in different types um which is why a lot of people find benefits in having both a cat and a dog yep um Cats, I the wish there was, I wish I'd saved this quote because it was wonderful. I read it last night about how mm -hmm. um, cats are entertaining and stress relieving to watch because they are something along the lines of being so elegant and agile and glamorous and just one false step away from total humiliation. <laughs> and it was it just defined it so perfectly like you have this super sleek agile predator who you know is just this most glamorous and elegant creature and they're literally just one poorly placed paw from <laughs> absolute humiliation <laughs> like miss congeniality style where yep. she trips over her heel and pops back up like i'm fine <laughs> to do that <laughs> to do that which again leads us back to cats and women <laughs> where we're these we're, we're viewed as these these really graceful creatures who are we're all just literally like one one word away from just absolutely humiliating ourselves at any given moment <laughs> yeah that's a great comparison that's a great comparison yeah. <laughs> and that's that was that's the that what was one of the like hypotheses of why we enjoy watching cats and why jo cats bring us so much joy and, and so much serotonin um is because it's it's su it's such a dichotomy they're either being you know elegant and graceful and beautiful or they're being ridiculously stupid <laughs> <laughs> and being beautiful while and there's no in between there's just <laughs> one extreme or the other <laughs> oh my god i love cats and i love dogs yes yep and the it's internet loves them. let me see i can let me pull my note it's real your quick head down there at the bottom <laughs> yes 1999 was the first known pictorial representation of of a cat meme which was as c i i art so yeah that's that's um that's some old school art form with just text for you youngins don't know what that is that's when we just take our keyboards and we draw pictures with like dashes and plus signs <laughs> like on the calculator you put you put in numbers you turn it upside down and it spells something so did you all know you could do that <laughs> did you did you uh, I was I was in a an actual like like Discord chat the other day and somebody started doing assy art and I was just like I oh my god it's been so long I don't even know if I know how to finish that <laughs> I was like I don't know if I, I I do I remember how to do this it's been a long time I never did it myself so I wouldn't be able to I'd have to learn it from from scratch but I know well, it, very well what you're talking about yeah it's it's that it, it was it's it's old stuff it's old school stuff but yeah 1999 is the first time we see a cat's image on the internet as a meme style image and um she's stuck against the wall 
Nope, she's trying to dance with the blueberries. All right, we're good. Uh, <laughs> I'm just checking on her. I think I'm sure she's not hurt herself. And uh, so, yeah, and that's the the internet and cats have become this this congealed thing. And you, you want to talk about mental health and cat videos. That's that's a major thing today mm -hmm. um, that that has been going on for 25 years just on the like just from just on the internet cats, pictures of cats to give you that serotonin yeah and absolutely. just make you feel warm and fuzzy and then there's there's dozens upon dozens of correlative studies on petting cats and playing with cats lowering anxiety and cortisol levels mm -hmm. and possibly even lowering your cardiac um event risk so they can they, yeah. re, they could potentially be connected to to lowering your risk of strokes and heart attacks um lowering your blood pressure there's there's all kinds of actual physiological health benefits as well to petting and playing with cats mm -hmm. and so well um i'm pressing wrong buttons on my computer um <laughs> like we went to that cat cafe years yeah. ago and dan and i just recently went to a different one but if you haven't been to a cat cafe and you're not allergic to cats yeah please, if you're not allergic to cats that's a big thing please go and support these these organizations you have so much fun you just go to play with cats i mean it's there's so many like 10 12 around you have toys everywhere and you leave like you just left like a massage like you feel mm. happy and you know just uh, grounded. I think that's a good word. Yeah. You'll feel very grounded and brought back into m this specific moment in time. Um, yeah. They're, and they're, is that the serotonin or is that even a different that, element? That is actually the serotonin. It's that's, that's, that's what's, that's what's in your anti-anxiety meds. That's what's, mm -hmm. or your, I'm sorry, and your antidepressants is okay. that, that, that gives you that yeah. sense of happiness. Yeah. Um, that's what that drug does. That's your, happiness drug that's not entirely true there's more than just serotonin that goes into making you feel happy but that sure. is the one that if you don't have mm -hmm. you aren't going to feel happy <laughs> that's your linchpin chemical that you need to, do to, to feel happiness um dopamine is needed to feel a sense of of uh, fulfillment or um satisfaction okay so that's that's what dopamine does is when that you get a pop of dopamine when you complete a task you get a pop of dopamine when you when you succeed at something yeah there you go there's your little serotonin in a bottle there's your antidepressant <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Um, I can't not put look at that picture. <laughs> I will say you brought up something really interesting that I see a lot that is some major misinformation that kind of upsets me is there's no such thing as a hypoallergenic cat. There are things you can do as someone who does actually have a cat allergies and still owns three cats and I just I, I also am most allergic to dogs and I have the most wonderful dog in the world. I I do this to myself. <laughs> there are some things. Side side note: Not everybody can have a cat, even though they are allergic. No, Be very no, specific no. about your circumstance. Yeah, there is there is some mitigation you can do if the allergy is not too severe. Um, there's like I do. I cover my pillow, so mm -hmm. I make sure that my face and their fur never meet. Um there's i i keep them bathed if they go outside because that's a major um source of allergies with cats is if they're going in and out they're bringing pollen into mm -hmm. the house that's just a, a thing that happens i don't stick my face into them i yeah. it's really hard and when i do i regret it deeply i try not to like have my face come in direct contact with their fur i wash my hands before touching my face with my hands um after handling them or anything about them, I make sure I clean. Like you've seen the blanket on the couch is there 
so that when I put my face near the couch, my face isn't where their fur was. Right. Like there's, there's little mitigation factors that I take to make my house a comfortable place for me <laughs> and them at the same time. Right. Um, but the allergy that you're having from dogs and cats is not from their fur. It's from their saliva. Uh, I, I think I've heard that. There's an enzyme in their saliva that they lick onto their fur. Okay. That's what you're allergic to. So even if you get a hairless cat, there's no guarantee that you're not going to have an allergic reaction. And the same goes with dogs. Even uh, hairless dogs are weird. I'm sorry. <laughs> If that's your thing, cool. It's not mine. It's very strange. I wouldn't mind a hairless cat, but I would definitely like end up calling it raw chicken parts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I could do a hairless cat. Yeah. It just, it looks too much. Yeah. Yeah. I have, I have a thing. <laughs> but even with hairless dogs and hairless cats, you're not allergic to the hair. Mm -hmm. You're not guaranteeing that you're not going to have an allergic reaction by getting a hairless cat or dog because what you're allergic to is in their saliva. It does seem, though, that if they're hairless, potentially it's a less, it's not, uh, their saliva isn't going to spread as much without the hair. I don't, I'm not explaining. It depends really. entirely um, because they are now licking their bare skin. Yeah. And that bare skin is now rubbing up against every surface. Yeah. yeah. As opposed to licking fur and having that saliva go down to the skin and there's a small buffer mm -hmm. there. Look at that void. Look at that majestic void. If you're on YouTube, you will get to see that majestic void. He's like, why are you holding me? I, this, is not, <laughs> this is not holding time. What are you doing? <laughs> And here we go. We talk about cats and consent again. Yep. <laughs> and You're shedding, yep. dude. Speaking of, of their fur. <laughs> it's like, man, it's getting hot. I know. Yeah. It's <laughs> going to shed some of the void. Oh, because it's 75 in the morning and 35 at night. I mean, yep. what did we're... <laughs> Welcome to North Carolina in the springtime <laughs> and the fall time. All That's at once. Do. Yeah. 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 We're, we're, we're just flipping AC to heat, AC to heat. No, I just turned on the AC. It's, it's I, fine. We'll pull an I, extra blanket on the bed. I don't something know. about this house, on now. I've never had to do that except in this house. It gets yeah. cold, like cold. If it's in the low sixties, the heat has to come on. I don't really? like it. Yes. It's wow. cold. I don't know, hmm. but it, it doesn't need to be a lot of heat, just enough to, to kind of remove the chill and then it's back to being okay. You need more cats. <laughs> HOA won't let me. <laughs> I cook underneath my giant long haired cat every night. I usually have to push him off around two or three because yep. I'm sweating. <laughs> I've got, I've got my black and white one that just sleeps right by my pillow. Yep. And she's like, she yells at me if my pillow is on the edge of the bed. I have to move my pillow in so she can have the edge of the bed <laughs> next to the pillow. Otherwise, she will just sit there and yell at you and paw at my hair. You're in my spot. Excuse me. Yep. This is, I, I, You're in my spot. You know this. Not right? acceptable. Why? Yeah. <laughs> and the other, like, health note. That leads me to the other health note about cats is cats can also be great therapy animals for um, people with with disabilities and and um, social troubles. They they can cause social and calm social anxiety. They can help um, people with autism practice social mm -hmm. activities, which sounds strange, but because of the way cats interact, it works out really well. Yeah, um, cats are not. Cats are social creatures. There's this big um, misconception that cats are loners and they're lone hunters. They actually live in very socially complex communities um, where they can have dozens of very complex relations 
across a, a, a network of cats. And it, it's very interesting to watch large communities of feral cats interact. I, I am from Florida, which is a state that has a major feral cat problem. And I'm going to refer to it as a problem, not a population, because it is. And yeah. Uh, yeah, that you empty lots on corners can be home to hundreds of feral cats. Mm -hmm. And those communities are very complex. And how they interact with each other, they, they use body language and, and, and these very complex social cues to interact with each other that can be really helpful for someone with social anxiety and with social disabilities to learn if, if you can communicate with your cat in that social way, then it, it helps you with, with people. Yeah. It's very interesting. Yeah. It's almost like, um, it's your, your initial sounding board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's been times I don't have the allergy to cats that you do. So I'll come home. It's been a rough day. And if one of my cats will let me, I'll pick them up and I will just like completely <laughs> burrow because that's, it makes me feel safe and grounded and helps mm -hmm. me realign and, and look at my problems from a better light type of thing. It's yeah. like that initial, like, okay, I'm home. I can breathe. I can start processing whatever I was mm -hmm. dealing with for that's for me, how I feel about the cats is it's an, an instant. <sighs> Yeah, that like deep thing. breath. Yeah, of calmness. Then and the the greeting committee just coming to say hi. Yeah, we have, a full, we have a full food bowl. We're good. We're set for life. But also, hi, it's <laughs> nice you came back. Did you bring anything extra? <laughs> Do you have a snack? <laughs> Do you have any fish on you? Yeah. <laughs> what did you bring? Did you bring anything back? <laughs> you were gone a long time. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. I know. I know we're talking about cats. My dog's looking at me like, when are you going to talk about me? <laughs> talk about dogs. It's okay. Yeah, Especially will. with the new information coming out about women being the ones responsible for domesticating dogs. I, I'm waiting for, for a little mm -hmm. more research on that. And then, yeah, I am very interested in that, that information. Stay tuned. That sounds like a fun episode. Yeah. Yeah. We'll bring that in soon. Um, so let's introduce our cats. Yeah. Look about Absolutely. our cats. So you saw Finn. That's my black boy. <laughs> so I may need. That's what my husband calls him. Yeah, be careful. <laughs> I'm going to get canceled. <laughs> I came out. It sounds different when it comes out. Um, no, he's my, he's my, my, my good luck cat. Um, I've had, let's see, he is, I got him in 2016. So ugh. he's eight. Oh God. He's eight. Um, Luna is my little black and white baby. Uh, she's long haired. Um, I'm not sure if y'all ever see her on this podcast. We'll see. She's picky. Um, I've had her since 2012 and she was a kitten. So that's 12 years. So I've got an eight year old and a 12 year old. Yeah. And I've right got, here. give me one second. Cause I'm loading up here. So I did while well, she's looking that up, I got both of those. Um, they were rescues. One came from a shelter. Yeah. Uh, Luna came from a shelter. Oh, you can screen share. I nice. can screen share. Nice. Oh, well, so, you talk about yes. yours and I will pull up a picture of mine. Yes. Okay. Hold on. Let me get rid of that tag there. Okay. Well, so while she's talking about that, I got Luna from a shelter. Um, she was three months old. Um, adorable little baby. And then Finn was maybe, maybe six months old, maybe five or six months old when I got him and your sister actually found him in her work parking lot eating a cheeseburger. Joy it has a knack for finding cats. She does. And she Pretty called scary. me. <laughs> she can, she can communicate with them. Um, and she called me and was like, Hey, I know you mentioned you wanted a kitten. You want this one? And I was like, 
Yes, I do. <laughs> and, and yeah, it wasn't that great of a story, like a long of a story, but yeah, that's how I got, how I got my two cats. All right. You talk then, about yours. You, I'm going to pull up a picture. Can you see my mouse? No, no. Okay. No. So down there at the bottom in, in the very fine looking tuxedo is my, my little once upon a time homeless gentleman Wednesday. And he has, he does have one eye. That is not a trick of the light. He has no teeth. He is, he is very old. We're not actually sure how old he is, but he's, he's up there and he's, he's my geriatric at the moment. And then in the middle, that giant fluff ball that is actually taking up the entire basket <laughs> is Diego. Um, he's amazing. He's gosh, he's going to be, he's going to be seven. Oh, <gasps> yeah. He's doing as a baby. Yeah. Oh he's, my he's goodness. Seven. He's, he's going to be like a, an adult adult. Um, but we got him from a friend, uh, same, same person we got Wednesday from, um, he is, he is a major, major social love bug. He, anyone can hold him anyone can pet him he'll walk up to just about anyone yep. and he then there amazing. at the top is our latest edition that is mochi um, i i brought i may have brought home a monster this, this cat has so much energy He's, <laughs> yeah it's fine <clears throat> we may have to buy a cat wheel i promise videos if we do it <laughs> Um, but he is, he's very affectionate. He's, he's my baby. That's, he's just a baby. He's just my baby. I love him. I am, yeah, I am cat. jealous that you have a picture of all three together. I, this cat can't. tree, like this cat tree, man, this is the only cat tree we've ever owned that all of them want to sit in. Oh, yeah. I am such a great investment. <laughs> All right. I, I know I have a picture of the two of them together, but I just can't find it. So, um, I'm looking, I should have had this prepared. All right. Here is, I'm just going to share that real quickly. No, because it's disgusting. My goodness. That's all right. So this isn't the best picture quite per se, but um, this is Luna. She's so cute. She's so cute. She's the, uh, probably the tiniest of all of our cats. Yes. She's only like nine pounds, um, all fur. She doesn't look tiny. She looks normal size, but she's got a lot of fur. And so when you pick her up, you're like, oh my God, you're so small. Um, she's got a mind of her own. That's for sure. Um, and then Finn. <laughs> oh my gosh he's he's so funny he loves his picture taken i swear up and down this is finn that finn isn't he inhabits an alien at night i swear to god <laughs> he changes his body stance and his look every night it's so weird we can't get it on camera i keep trying and it just looks like Finn. and dan and i are both like what's going on with you <laughs> oh my gosh but he is he is just precious yeah, yeah. Them's and we've, had, we've all had more cats or we've both had more cats in our lifetimes that have oh, come yeah. and gone and that's part of life and and i do think that that's also important as family and now that we have children no one wants to talk about the subject of grief and passing with their children but personally That's i think having animals is a good um gateway i'm not a big fan of that word but it's a good gateway into that topic it's a good vehicle for that vehicle topic. thank you that's, that's a better word for that that is much better yeah having having pets is a great way to introduce the concept of mortality to your kids. Obviously, don't get a pet with the purpose of that. Oh my God, I can't <laughs> believe someone would do that, but you're right. Someone I'd, would totally do that. Yeah, 
No, don't do that. But when the, the inevitable happens, whether it be a fish or a lizard or a cat, mm -hmm. dog, it's going to happen. It, yeah, that is, that is a great vehicle to have that conversation and to introduce the concept to <laughs> For those of you who are not on YouTube, you are missing a wonderful, wonderful shot of alien Finn. <laughs> got one pretty good photo recently its eyes look like they're glowing green it's the way the camera hit yeah cat's eyes i don't know if anybody else has noticed but cat's eyes are really weird come camera time <laughs> and sometimes they reflect yes well not just sometimes all the time it's it's the fact that you, the camera catches the angle of the reflection oh okay yeah that okay that the back of their eye is is so filled with cones and rods for them to collect so much light that that the collection of that light is constantly reflecting you can even see it with the naked eye sometimes yes i have okay that makes yeah. that makes a mm -hmm. lot more sense it's um, and they yeah, can we, see they can see the infrared light of your camera so that is yes. why they are always aware when you're taking a picture Mm -hmm. Some of them don't want their picture taken and they are always looking away from it yep. and it's because they can see that light. Yeah, I have one of each. So Finn, as you can see, he likes to look at the camera. Mm -hmm. um, and so my camera was able to grab all of that, that reflective light, I guess, mm -hmm. in this image. And it's just beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then my other cat, Luna, I don't have nearly as many pictures of her because she is one to look away to from look that. Look away when she sees that light. Yeah, yeah, she does not like it at all. Yeah it's it's very interesting it's very cool and and they aren't the only animals that can see that light we have some outdoor cameras and it can get quite creepy when you've got a cat mm -hmm. walking across the backyard and they <laughs> look up directly into the camera and you're like that's weird that's a little strange <laughs> yeah I'm all... I... <laughs> you see we have rabbits that'll do it that'll just look straight into the camera and you're just like can you not <laughs> So, <laughs> so do you have any other last minute notes about cats and women cats and mental health or cats and cats i say if you if you can get you one if you've got one get two yeah they are social animals they always benefit from a friend i I know that shelters will push two kittens at a time. If you do two kittens at a time, make sure you have a lot of time on your hands and yep. make sure you don't love your curtains um, because will, they will be will at a time as well. If you do have an older cat, now's a great time. Between the ages of three and five is a great time to introduce a new kitten to the house. Mm -hmm. um, the older cat will still have the energy to play, but will also have the maturity to calm the kitten down when it's time to calm down yeah and kind of take them under their wing and like this yep. is where the food is this is where the litter box is teach them how to be a cat yep. yeah 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 but I, yeah i was gonna add that kittens kittens and ca older cats i feel like get along a lot better than a puppy and an older dog um not always the case this is not a an either yeah. or, but just from that, my my understanding you can get into uh, topics on that that has to do with the dogs the way dogs socialize is a lot simpler and a lot less complex from the way cats socialize mm -hmm. um dogs pecking orders don't have the same complexity that cats pecking orders do um and for instance if you've got a female cat i wouldn't necessarily recommend getting another female cat unless they're the same age as the other female cat. It's very strange. You can have two elderly female cats that get along great and are perfectly bonded, but you mm -hmm. will almost never have an elderly female cat and a younger female cat bond. Yeah. There's, there's very, there's a lot of complexity there. There um, is. Um, we were offered careful of when you're introducing cats to cats. We were offered another cat um, that I really wanted. It was so cute. Um, but it was a female and with our current life situation with new baby and running the business and already having two cats and a dog, I was like, I would love a new kitten, but it can't be female because our, yeah, our no. prior cat that was female that had passed Boogie, her and Luna did not get along at all. They were different ages, like you're saying. Yeah. 
Um, so we would love to have another kitten one day, one day, yeah. not now, Missy. And one day. In, in contrast, Gracie and Boogie, who were the same age, it did take a while. It took about a year and a half. Yeah. Um, it took me and Jim going on our honeymoon, I know. <laughs> but when we came back from our honeymoon, they had bonded perfectly. They would sit next to each other and watch birds. They had decided, okay, you like the same hobbies I like, and yeah. we both understand that we're not going to be playing with each other. <laughs> Jen's favorite story about that. So a little backstory, um, before I married my husband, he was living with Rose and her husband and, um, so when they went on their honeymoon, Dan had all the cats and he was like, yeah, Boogie and, and Gracie just started sleeping on me together. <laughs> He's like, he'd be laying there like, I have both cats on my chest. I guess they're friends now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he got yeah. to win that bond. It was it was a very cool bond. And I hate I hated to break it up because they just they were the best. They would sit. They would sit in front of the window together they would sit on the couch together you know always with about two three inches of space between them <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, they, it's it's very it's very complex when you're introducing a new cat to any kind of trifecta i could have gotten a female cat because i had two boys mm -hmm. um, but i just like you i like you said i was pregnant at the time there was a lot going on and introducing a younger male to two older males is way smoother and way easier mm -hmm. than than trying to cross any kind of gender barrier with the complexity of the social connections between cats i have a picture of you and wednesday and diego are you good if i share it yes okay because yes. it's so cute you probably know which one i'm talking about yeah love yeah this. This is those, are my, those are my two yeah. those are my two men yeah. I mean, Them's we humans. come home and they immediately just, <laughs> yep. Human home. I must sit. Yeah. The fluffy one in particular. Yeah. He's been very upset that, that I've been holding a baby. That's not him. No, but it's fine because now he has his own baby because Mochi demands to be held by him. So it's, it, it works out. itself out. It worked that itself worked. out. Yeah. yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. I think that's, I think we covered it. I think if, so. if you let me, I will continue talking about this for yeah. hours. So we should probably go ahead and put a we'll wrap it up. But as you come up with more or find more fun facts, we can always yeah. um, slide them in because we're the purring pot. We can talk about cats whenever cats we and want. pots and tea at any cats time. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Cats and pots. So we um so that's kind of why we we came up with the purring side of the purring pot, and uh, we'll do an episode at some point about the pot side which is teapot um oh, we love i it. would love to, we'll we'll start with pottery oh yes and, we can start and, with and the paleolithic age i will be so happy we can start with the birth of all pots yeah. and where the pot <laughs> come from what pots are for and, <laughs> yeah, and what pots so, are for. if you haven't realized um this this podcast is gonna go everywhere yes and that yeah. is that was our intention that is our goal um, we did not want to peg ourselves into a specific topic. Um, so follow along if that that's your jam. Join Cherry in. Pick the episodes if that's your jam. Um, but comment, please. Uh, give us pictures of your cats. We love them, as you can tell. Um, yeah, so comment, like, subscribe, ring the bell, whatever that thing is I'm supposed to say. Um, but we are... The Purring Pot. This is my sister-in-law, Rose. I am Stephanie. Um, we are on Spotify and YouTube for our podcasting. We're also on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. The Purring Pot at all of those locations. So yep. I hope everybody has a wonderful day. And uh, let us know if you have a, a specific cat topic you would like us to uh, further investigate. Yeah, <laughs> or absolutely. whatever. Um, so yeah, everyone have a good day. And... Goodbye.